Hi. I know your channel is primarily all about cryptids and things like that. So, forgive me if this doesn't fit into that realm. But I know I saw something in the paranormal or supernatural realm. That much I do believe. Back when I was around 9 or 10 years old, I invited one of my close friends over for a party. We stayed up till about 3 or 4 in the morning, eating junk food, playing Xbox, the usual things that 6th graders do. But before I go on with my story and what it is that my friend and I saw, who, by the way, having a secondary witness will always help your case, let me take a brief moment to describe the layout of our house and the land surrounding it. I don't know how much acreage we actually had, but the way our house looked, you'd pull up on the end of the road, because that's where our house was, at the very end, and you go up the driveway to a small, single-story house with a basement, but the way the land was, it kind of sloped down in a long hill. It was a very gradual decline, so as you go up the driveway to the first story of the house, you'd go right into the main foyer area, in the living room off to your left, and the kitchen directly in front of you. Now, directly to your right, you could go down to the stairs, which led to the family room. And because of the sloping landscape, right out the back door, directly to your right, or in front of you, would be our backyard, which was now level with the sloping ground. Or to make it easier to understand, instead of going into our house, if you were to walk all the way around the house, the land sloped so much that the downstairs family room back door was level with the ground. Meaning, if you were to look out from the back side of the first story window, you would technically now be on the second story because of how the ground sloped. Sorry, I'm not good at explaining this, so I'm trying to do this without being too redundant. Hopefully you get what I mean. Now, on the left and right side of the houses, there were no trees, just tall wooden fences, and our backyard went quite a ways down and there was some trees and some forested area way down there, but nothing that I ever went and played with. Looking back on it, I think they were just two undeveloped plots of land that were probably going to have future development of houses, but I can't be too sure. I never played back there, since we moved in when I was eight, and, well, I just never bothered exploring down there. We didn't live in this house much longer after this incident had occurred. Okay, so let's get back up to speed. So, it's about midnight, one in the morning. My friend and I are down in the family room, playing video games on the large screen TV. Our backs are facing the sliding glass door that if you were to go out, would lead directly down the sloping back side of the house. Actually, if I remember right, we were actually playing Halo, which, if that's not a throwback to the past for you. So, at one point or another, my friend gets up and needs to go get a glass of water. He goes upstairs, gets his water, and as he's coming downstairs, he stops, and he's like, Dude, what was that? And I turn around, and I could see him freaked out, kind of hiding in the small hallway that would guard him from any view of the sliding glass door. There's a couch directly behind me, so if you were to look in from the sliding glass door, you could probably only see the top of my head. So I kind of had to stand up a little bit to see what he was referring to. As I stood up, I didn't see anything. So, I'm kind of looking at him, confused at what the panic was about. And he's like, I saw movement. Somebody's out there, I think. I mean, even at 9 or 10 years old, I thought it was a ridiculous idea. No one's going to try and break into our house. It's nothing special. And my dad keeps several guns loaded by his bed and in his closet. On top of that, my dad was a chatty Cathy. He was pretty much in cahoots with just about every neighbor within a mile of us. Even if they weren't the best of friends, he pretty much talked to everybody. So we were a known family in this small vicinity of the street. So I just told my friend that I'm sure it's nothing. It was probably just the reflection of him coming in the room. But he stayed a little bit panicked and looked back at the glass, waited, didn't see anything. And after about a minute or two of trying to convince him that all is well, he was like, all right, you're right. I'm probably just freaking out. So he comes back, sits down, and we're back to engrossing ourselves in Halo multiplayer. Now, as we move forward in time a little bit, maybe a couple matches had gone by, so I can't see it being more than an hour tops. I feel like that's kind of a stretch. But at one point, 
Him and I both hear a loud bang on the window, like somebody took a hard, maybe metal object, and slammed it up against the window, causing us both to scream and throw our controllers, jumping up and looking back. We could actually see the window still shaking from impact, but no movement, nothing. We actually did not have any sort of porch light or any light beyond the sliding glass door, so you couldn't really see much beyond what the light in the room allowed you to see on the outside. And now we were sure somebody was out there, and my friend's story seemed very believable very quickly. So we both agreed, let's go tell our dad without wasting a second. We jump up, go run up to my parents' room, bang on the door, my dad not being too happy that we're waking him up over probably some nonsense, and he worked a pretty early shift in the morning. Around three or four, he had to get up, so he wasn't thrilled. We explained to him we swore we saw somebody trying to get into the house from the sliding glass door. He pops up, grabs his shotgun, and immediately barrels past us down the stairs, down to the family room. Without even hesitating, grabs a flashlight, opens the sliding glass door, and we're following the whole time. He doesn't even say a word, doesn't ask any questions. Opens the door, shines it around. The shotgun is cocked and loaded, and he's got it ready to fire. So now he's yelling out, We know you're here. Show yourself. You better run. I got a loaded gun. All sorts of taunts and whatnot. My dad took this stuff very seriously, and because of that, He's very much a shoot first, ask questions later kind of guy. So he's out there for maybe three to five minutes, looking around, scanning everything, doesn't see anything. And at one point, he turns the flashlight off, walks in, closes the door, and just tells us, Boys, I think you may have seen a dog or something. There's probably a reason for what you heard. Doesn't waste any more time, wishes us luck on our Halo multiplayer, and explains to us he's got to be up early. So he's going to go back to bed, let him know if anything else happens. So we say our goodnights, and we calmly go back to playing Halo once again. Maybe. About 20 or 30 minutes had passed, and I'm pretty sure by this point, my dad was fast asleep. We had just finished another Halo multiplayer match, and I think we were deciding to go up to the kitchen to grab some food. So him and I both get up, and we turn and look as our attention is naturally drawn to something looking at us through the window. We both look, and we see this face staring at us through the window that I can only describe looks like Skeletor, if you've ever seen that. My friend and I both go screaming upstairs, and we hide up in the kitchen for probably the next hour or two, too afraid to wake up my father, since he had to get up here in a couple of hours. So we both grab knives, and we sit there and we wait, Maybe 30 minutes or an hour goes by, and we're brave enough to go back downstairs. At that point, we just decide to say screw it. We go downstairs together, turn off the Xbox, shut off the lights, and run upstairs. We sleep up in the living room, where we have safety of height from where we were in the family room, and we sleep out there. My dad wakes us up maybe about 4.35, asking us why we have knives and why we're sleeping up here in the living room and not down in the family room, where we already had our sleeping bags. We didn't really tell him right away. We kind of just said we were a little spooked, that we thought we saw something. I'm pretty sure my dad just thought we were hyped up on fear and paranoia, but I'm not exactly sure. Sometimes he could be a really hard person to read, but not much was said. He went off to work. We went back to sleep. Nothing happened the rest of the time after that. But when my dad came home, he really seemed concerned. At this point, my friend had already long gone home, so it was just me and my mother home. He pulled me aside and was asking me, what did you and your friend see last night? And I told him exactly that we saw this strange skeleton looking face looking at us through the window. It did not look like somebody with face paint on. It looked like something out of a horror movie. That much I do remember, even only being nine or 10 years old. That image of that face is forever burned in my mind and it was staring at us for God knows how long. As I'm explaining this to him, his expression only grows more and more concerning, as he told me that before he came home, he spoke with some of the neighbors next door, and they too were saying that last night they had what they thought was a visitor trying to break in, that gave very similar descriptions as to what I said. So, he knows I'm not lying, but he just told me I should stay in my room from now on, and always keep an eye out, and if I see anything, let him know. 
Luckily, after that, I never saw that face or experienced that again. I never went down to the family room after dark. It freaked me out too much after that. And any time I had friends over, for the remainder of living in that house, we would always go upstairs, or at least close the blinds if it got too dark. Not even five months later, we moved out of that house. I have a more recent encounter with something I'm not exactly sure what it was, but I suspect it might be the rake. Ultimately, I'll let you be the judge. So, a quick background on me. I'm 19 now, and back when this happened in 2019, I was 17, almost graduating high school. Because our house is pretty small, my parents are usually really nosy. Like, they always eavesdrop on me and my girlfriend's conversation. So, what I like to do is leave the house and go off into this small area of woods nearby. It's actually on a local trail, so it's not too busy. Anyway, I go out there as often as I can to go have private conversations. And no, not like that. Just to have conversation without being eavesdropped on. And so one day, things were pretty usual. I went out there in the afternoon. My girlfriend and I were chit-chatting on the phone. Everything was good. Oh, and I should also mention, I just love being out in the sunshine and the greenery around me in general. So that was an added bonus. At one point or another during the phone conversation, I was just kind of, you know, loosely looking around when I could have sworn I saw the face of somebody watching me through the trees, maybe, I don't know, 50 feet away, behind a tree. I had a double take, but the face disappeared. I thought I was just seeing things, got lost in conversation again, didn't mention anything, and then I see the same face again from a different tree behind me as I was kind of turning around and just talking. That's when I immediately told my girlfriend over the phone that I think somebody was spying on me. So I turned around and began shortly walking down the trail at a pretty brisk pace just to kind of keep things moving. And right then, I hear rustling of leaves and twigs snapping. So I look over and I see this all-white figure, at least from what I could see through the trees, on all fours, crawling like an animal. Not coming towards me, of course, but just keeping up along with me, staying the same distance away as it was when it first looked at me. In the moment, though, I thought it was maybe some crazed naked druggie or some meth head, so I thought I was about to get jumped. So I quickly turn back around and I start running and sprinting as fast as I can back home, with my girlfriend still on the phone. I hear this thing turn around with me and start leaping through the forest. It sounds like a horse galloping. Whatever it was sounded very large and very heavy. But at some point, the noise stopped, and I never turned around to see if it had burst out into the trail and was following me. By the time I did make it back towards my house, I did try and turn and see, but I didn't see anything suspicious looking following me off the trail into the neighborhood. So, maybe it only followed me a certain way. Or maybe it was curious. I say it because I would later try and research my girlfriend and I, and based on the description that I gave her and what I found, it looked to be what people are calling a rake, even though at the time I thought it was some naked meth head who was about to jump me, but I didn't know any better, and I guess the rake is considered what you would call a cryptid, something I know nothing about. So, you seem to be the go-to guy for these kinds of monster stories, I guess. So, what can you tell me about this encounter I had? Was it just all in my head? Or was this potentially a rake? Or something else entirely? Being a local to New Jersey, I've heard all sorts of crazy stories you probably wouldn't believe about the Jersey Devil. But... Until you've had your own actual experience and you could see this demon in front of you for the first time. Those stories are just that. Stories. And while I've spent many of my years in my youth camping, gallivanting, and parting in the Pine Barrens, I never thought I would be the one select few to have my own face-to-face -face encounter with this demon-like creature. I'm 36 now, so this happened quite a while back. 
while I was in my early 20s. Still kind of in and out of that party phase. Still going through a rough growing up period, if you know what I mean. Hanging around with the wrong crowd. Substance abuse. Among other toxic behaviors. I often spent many nights alone. As much as I could in the Pine Barrens. Not because I specifically had a love for the Pine Barrens. It was just, I love the woods. And those were really the closest that there were around me. So, I tried to learn as much as I could. Spend as much time as I could. And ultimately, for years, all my experiences and encounters in the woods were very normal. In fact, the only encounters I ever had were small critters that would normally be residents to the woods anyway. But, when you grow up in this area you'll come across all sorts of stories from locals and friends and family alike. Things about Bigfoot. Strange lights. Strange noises. Aliens. UFOs. All sorts of hoopla coming from the Pine Barrens. I've even heard countless stories of occult rituals and satanic worship and sacrifice happening within the Pine Barrens. But that's all they were to me at the time. Just stories. I had never seen any of this stuff with my own eyes. But I would eventually get my chance. So this one night, I'm camping out by myself. It was just me, a small single-person tent. I didn't go too far into the woods, like miles and miles, like most people. I was more towards the edge of the woods, maybe a half mile in, if I wanted to get out. But that was my usual. On nights that I wasn't partying, or going completely crazy, or spending it with a very toxic girlfriend at the time, I would just try and go and be at peace with myself, meditate out in the woods, and believe it or not, I found sleeping in a sleeping bag out in a small tent in the middle of the woods much more relaxing and comfortable than sleeping at my ratty apartment at the time, which I shared with two very volatile roommates. My normal night routine is I would have my fire, sit by the fire, relax, read a good book, and eventually turn into bed in the tent, probably still reading my book until it was time to close my eyes, usually with a flashlight, of course. And sometimes, this night included, I remember this, I would sometimes forget to go pee before I went to bed, and so I hated getting up out of my sleeping bag, so I always tried to make it a priority to go and take a leak before I lay down. But this night, I forgot, and I almost wonder, had I not forgotten... Maybe I wouldn't have had this encounter, but I don't know. So I go to lay down, I got my book, and I'm reading, and I feel the urge to go. Flustered that I had forgotten to go before I laid down, because I hate getting uncomfortable once I've already gotten into a very comfortable position. I pull myself up, grab my flashlight, and maybe wander about 15-20 feet away from my camp. I undo my pants, and I'm there doing my business. Now, while this is going on, I hear this strange whooshing, fluttering noise off to my left, up in a tree. It sounded awfully loud to just be a bat or some sort of owl. Like, if it had come from an owl, the owl would have needed to be considerable size to make this amount of noise. So, out of reaction, I turn my flashlight up towards the tree where I'd heard the noise. And that's when my urine stream stopped mid-flow. I was terrified. I'm not just adding in that detail to be funny. I mean, what I saw, it was the embodiment of all nightmares combined. Sitting, perched up in this tree, on this fat branch, maybe no higher than 20 feet up in the air, was this demonic gargoyle-looking being with orange glowing yellow eyes. And it had this very elongated face, which is what they find common with the Jersey Devil. Now, it didn't look like a horse, but it had almost a horse-like face, where its face is kind of pulled out and elongated. It had these tall bat-like ears on the side of its head that shot straight up and were pointed, and it had these nasty wings that were kind of coiled around it, and as soon as I shine my flashlight on it, it's like I was looking something straight out of a horror Hollywood movie. It certainly reacted to the light shining in its face, kind of grimacing, but sort of squinting its eyes at the same time. It then quickly coiled its wings around its body, and then shot up in the air, and completely disappeared. As soon as my light hit it, and I saw this thing for what it was, I just remember muttering out loud, What the F are you? 
and within a second, this thing coils its wings and is gone. And I knew I wasn't just seeing things, because as this thing shot up out of the tree, the weight of it being on the branch, as soon as it took off, the branch lifted up, as if something being heavy on it was now taken off. I quickly run back to my tent, dive in, zip the tent up, jump into my sleeping bag, and I zip that thing up all the way to where my whole body is covered inside. I was terrified. I didn't have any weapons on me. Stupid me, I know. But now my new game plan was to just wait until the sun came up, and then I would be safe to leave, because I had no idea if that thing was still out there. When this happened to me, I wasn't thinking, oh my gosh, I just saw the Jersey Devil. My mind was in such disarray and trying to process what I had just looked at. I wasn't sure if I had saw a demon or a gargoyle or what it was that I saw. But I can tell you that I have never felt pure terror like that. It was like a wave that hit my entire body all at once. And I have never felt frozen in fear, truly, until a moment like that. And the rest of that night is kind of a blur because I think I was so terrified. I don't even recall if I slept at all. I just remember at one point, popping my head out, and the sun was just barely rising. Just enough light, the same as there would be in dusk. So, I quickly gathered my stuff up, didn't even waste too much time, and went back to my apartment at the time. For about the next couple weeks, I was too afraid to go back to the forest. Not just the Pine Barrens, but really any woods to be honest until maybe about a month later in total. I told a family member, who I had trusted and told stories to before, not encounters with things like this, but about abusive situations before in my past, somebody I felt safe opening up to. They told me that it sounds like I had my very own run-in with the Jersey Devil. They went on to share with me their own personal encounter, about how they were driving home late one night, and they saw a similar creature, as I described, swooped down and nearly shattered their windshield. But you can tell why that they kept that encounter to themselves, for fear of mocking and disbelief. But I'll always remember that moment, because just like I was being vulnerable and opening up to them, they were being vulnerable and opening up to me, expressing the same encounter with the same creature. And after thinking for a moment, I realized, oh my gosh, I had my very own run-in with this thing. The Jersey Devil is real. Which really makes it more terrifying because if that's the case, that means Sasquatch and I'm sure all the other things that happen in the Pine Barrens probably really do go on. Assuming that it is what I saw. My encounter happened a while back, 2013, and I can remember it like it was yesterday. I was traveling northbound along the John Davison Rockefeller Memorial Highway, commonly known as Highway 70, heading up to Lakehurst in Jersey. It was evening time, just about dusk, but there was still light outside, but dark enough that everybody should have had their headlights on. There was a fair amount of traffic on the road, a few cars in front of me, and several oncoming cars every little bit. I couldn't tell you the exact part on the road I was on, but I'm driving, and I see an oncoming vehicle stop and kind of swerve out of the way. Then, I see what I'll describe as this black shape kind of bounce in front of the vehicle right in front of me, causing them almost to stop and swerve. Then, jump up again and jump right in front of my vehicle, maybe no more than 30 feet causing me to slam on my brakes and nearly swerve off the road. Then, this shape, or thing, jumps up in the air and vanishes. I'm astonished that, between me and the two other drivers that, whatever the shape was, jumped in front of, it didn't cause any of us to have any accidents. We were all far enough away that halting on our brakes wouldn't have caused any traffic collisions, but still... As soon as I saw the oncoming car halt on its brakes and swerve, my first thought was a deer had just ran out into the front of the road. But then I saw the black shape move, all within a second. And so, I'm trying to think, what was that, when I see the car in front of me halt on their brakes and swerve? And then, the shape jumps in front of my car, and just for about a second, I caught a glimpse 
of what looked like a strange winged bat. It's almost like it flew down, crouched down on the road, and then jumped back up and soared into the air. I only got maybe a second or two to look at it, and it happened all so fast that the only way I can describe it to you is it was kind of half man, half bat. Which, trust me, I know that sounds so awfully silly, but its body proportions were really that of a man than anything else. The face was longer, but it looked exactly like what you'd see out of a bat. Very ugly, very long, and very strange looking, like it didn't belong in this natural world. In that very moment, I was more frightened that I was going to hit it, or cause a traffic collision, than anything else. Once the thing jumped up, or should I say bounced up and disappeared, the car in front of me and the oncoming vehicle were already back up to speed and straightened out on the road, as I was regaining speed myself. Nobody was behind me, so again, I didn't have to worry about causing an accident like I initially thought, but still, what kind of animal could this have been? I did think about it, but it didn't cause me to lose any sleep. But it's definitely a weird experience that I've gone through, and it has stuck with me. I mean, how could you forget something like this? Having only lived in this area since 2006, I've heard all sorts of stories about a Batman, Mothman, and other strange creatures, folklore, I should say, that are supposed to inhabit the island and the areas around here, all the way up from Virginia, even up to Maine. But I never paid them much attention. Is it possible that I saw something out of legend, or was this simply just a very large bat that I mistook the identity for? And before I end this email, I just wanted to say that I can't over-exaggerate the size. It was clearly large enough that when it first flew in front of my car and I saw the bat features, I thought it honestly was maybe a man, just due to the size alone, and the fact that a large bat, even when the size of an owl, is not going to cause two cars in front of me to halt and swerve on the road from nearly hitting it. So, again, I don't know what I saw. First, I would just like to state that I firmly believe I've had my own encounter with what you and many would consider to be known as the Jersey Devil. But what I know about it seems to be vastly different than what most people know about it. For example, here's what I know. That the Jersey Devil is actually said to roam the open plains of New Jersey, and supposedly lives in a swamp. But people have been warning us for years not to go into the open waters of Jersey and keep your distance. According to even urban legend, the Jersey Devil was once roaming the pinelands as a wild dog. Not sure how much truth there is to that. Some say that he's the real protector of the Pine Barrens, guarding against all kinds of evil, even though he himself is evil. Several have also told stories about encounters with the Jersey Devil in the swamps of the Pine Barrens specifically, according to the commissions. There is an even old book about the legends of the Monmouth Pinelands, one account read kind of like a fairy tale. Basically, a lady lived in a lonely cottage in the Pine Barrens at the time, one night, she tried to sleep on her front porch, but instead fell asleep in the water. She was dreaming of a monster in white skin, which woke her in the night. When she woke the next morning, the woman discovered that the pine barrens were once full of tall palm trees. Again, I don't know how much truth there is to that. It's just what I've heard. I'm hoping that the legend of this hideous Jersey Devil is probably just a legend Although after seeing it, what I believe to be myself, there might be some truth. No one is sure exactly where the story of this wild, wandering devil came from. And I know there are many accounts of this being seen in the Pine Barrens. But there are also seeming to be tales in the Atlantic Ocean. It seems that most sightings occur around Halloween, where the devil himself is known to take human form and wander through the streets. One of the Jersey Devil's favorite spots, of course being the Pine Barrens, as well as the Catskills in the Connecticut River Valley. Many people believe that there's even a connection between the infamous Connecticut River Valley killer 
and the Jersey Devil possessing the individual. Many people also believe that this thing comes out at night to scare and attack people. But one of the more popular legends about the Jersey Devil is that he himself lives in a large wooded area in West Hempstead, New Jersey, and that even the locals around here say you could see him there at night, but not all the time. Others say that he resides near a very large house with a very gate in the center of it. There are many other alleged sightings all over the country, mostly in southern parts of New Jersey. Actually, one of the most famous alleged sightings took place in Arizona, where a very well-known TV show host claimed that he saw a creature resembling the Jersey Devil come out of the water, and he captured it on tape. There are other strange sightings all over the world, including on Rhode Island, Texas, California, Maryland, Colorado, Illinois, and even Florida. There are even stories about a Jersey Devil that was supposedly sighted in Louisiana by a man who had taken a photograph of it, but it's kind of all hearsay. So, I'm not exactly sure what I saw after knowing the details of what I just told you. From what I know, the Jersey Devil is said to have long bat-like wings, big ears, and a short tail. Basically the same creature I've seen multiple times. They also say he has big red eyes and a hooked tail. I never saw any eyes or a hooked tail, but very interesting. Some have also claimed he has four wings, too broad and too long, and the wings almost kind of seem twisted. And many people say that the wings are also very wide, like a bat's. No one is exactly sure what this elusive and legendary creature is or where it came from, but many claim it to be true, me included. I'm not exactly sure what I encountered, but the sighting of these things that weren't clearly human still haunts me. This is back in 2010, and I was in Colorado, bird watching. In fact, it was a beautiful Saturday morning, and I lived out on beautiful property with a large field off to my right. I was going to the bird feeder at the edge of my property, and out of the corner of my eye, I see three dark colored creatures literally flying across the field towards my house. Completely panicked and terrified, I ran in the house and waited. My husband wasn't home, so I really had no weapons to defend myself. When my husband got home later, I didn't bother telling him what I saw because he probably wouldn't have believed me. Then, a couple of days later, the following evening, I was bird watching again and as I went again to go to the bird feeder, I see these same strange three creatures flying towards the house again. Panicked, I run back in the house a second time, and I pull up my notebook and jot down exactly what I saw, what their descriptions looked like, because I didn't want to forget it. We didn't have a computer in the house at the time. Trust me, I know. Being 2010, you think everybody would be. There'd be other nights where, again... My husband wasn't home or was in bed, since he had to get up very early for work. I'd be sitting out on my porch alone at night, and I'd see strange dark figures emerge from the woodline and work their way slowly towards the house, almost creeping. I was completely terrified, unsure if I should go wake my husband or just stand my ground. It seems like every time I'd always look back, they would disappear completely into the underbrush and I never got answers. One incident specifically really terrified me. I saw a few of these figures slowly approaching the house when they vanished. Shortly after, I see this large dark shape in the sky come right over around our property and start emitting these strange red flashing lights. It was like a plane, but much larger and much lower to the ground. It was almost kind of a diamond shape, I kind of went in and out of consciousness. My memory's very blurry. And I'm not exactly sure what happened next, because I ran inside. It's a very strange experience. The next day, I became so violently sick, my husband had to take off work and take me to the hospital. They couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. But I nearly died, twice. And I was confined to a hospital bed 
for four to five days. I believe that that shape in the sky had something to do with it, although I'm not sure. The only other strange account I could possibly recall that I know of in my community is that a young woman, not too long ago, well, before I had my experience, was walking her dog on a sloping hill one evening when she felt something strange in the air, is how she described it, and she sees this large, emaciated dog approaching her. Instead of turning around, the woman said that she just continued walking, picking up her pace because she felt terrified. She said that in response to her picking up her pace, this thing also picked up its pace and began running after her. Now completely terrified, she went as fast as she could, back to the trail where she was on and back to her car, where this thing eventually dove off into the woods. But the entire time, this thing still continued to follow her, making all sorts of horrible growls and noises in the woods, like it did not want her there. She described the creature as looking like a starved dog, hunched over on two legs, incredibly ugly and very frightening looking. We didn't spend too much longer living on that ranch, because me seeing these three beings would be a reoccurring thing over and over. Finally, maybe no more than a year later, we moved to a different state entirely. Normally, I'm not really a believer in ghosts, paranormal, UFOs, or aliens, but that experience, now 11 years ago, really completely changed my entire perspective on what I even perceive as normal and our reality. Lastly, let me go ahead and share some details with you that I had written down in my notebook about these three beings that I would see over and over again. They were tall. They were very dark. They almost had a very slender and human build, very bulky up by the shoulders, and almost a reptilian-like head. Large bulky arms, too long for their body, with hands that were completely oversized, and long white claws. Their faces were very serpentine, but deep set in eyes, and teeth that were very reminiscent of a fish. Tiny, but millions of sharp little teeth. Could these creatures have been aliens? I'm still not exactly sure what this was to this day, so I'm hoping, since you're kind of the monster master here, you can kind of help me pinpoint exactly what it is. I'm just hoping you'll respond back to me, and in an exchange of emails, can give me some much needed answers, because what I saw just doesn't make sense. Alright, let's cut to the story. I won't bore you with long, unimportant backstory details, so to cut to the chase, me and a good buddy of mine were exploring and hiking up in northern Colorado, not too far outside of Boulder, in the general vicinity of the Rocky Mountain National Park. I think closer to Red Feather Lakes, if we're trying to get an exact location. And at one point or another, during our several day long hike, we had found the mouth to a very small cave. It kind of led at a 45 degree angle down into the ground, so the opening was big enough. And we weren't properly equipped, but we thought, what the heck, might as well explore what we can and deviate from our already out of schedule hike because we were supposed to be back a day or so before, but we were having such a good time that, whatever, our family could suck it up. The opening led to a rather small chamber, maybe 20 feet across and 10 feet tall, tall enough that we could both stand up in. We thought it was pretty cool, and since we didn't have a map of any of the caves around here, him and I are both aware that there are many uncharted little caves all throughout this mountain range even if these caves are so small that they're not even considered caves. And I know you gotta be careful, because some of these could be considered dens. We kinda shined our lights around, looked around casually, didn't see much, didn't notice much. We were just thrilled to be in here, until we shined our lights a little further, and saw that it dips down about another 45 degrees, down deeper into the earth. Debating on whether we should go further, because we only had flashlights that weren't that great, and we didn't want to stray too much away from the light outside, bleeding into the first chamber. We decided, what the heck, let's go a little further. We felt a little adventurous, so we press on and go down to this next little tunnel, and now it's almost completely pitch black. But this next portion, this next chamber, opened up much larger, 
to a chamber that we couldn't even see all the way across. Due to the angle at which we were at, it sloped down even further in this large opening, kind of like a mini cliff, and our light would not shine all the way down to the bottom, so there's no telling. My buddy picks up a rock and throws it down there, and you could hear it kind of poom, 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 all the way down to the very bottom. It sounded like at least a several hundred foot drop. I guess not uncommon to find tunnels and caves like these. We stood there for about another moment or more, figuring that we certainly did not have the equipment to scale this. We just decided to cut our losses and headed back to the first chamber. As we're exiting out of the first chamber, back out into daylight, we hear this sound coming from within the cave. It sounded like a dragon. I mean... I know that sounds pretty crazy of a description, but I can't think of another description to use. It would be the stereotypical sound you would hear from some sort of large prehistoric reptile used in a Hollywood movie, I guess. At least, that's what came to my mind, and my friend's mind too. We heard this loud squawk, roar type sound. My friend and I both turned to each other and gave each other a look, like we're in complete disbelief, and a look like, did you hear that? Or was that just me? Are we crazy? We both look back, but don't see anything. And we hear the sound of something approaching. Something big, coming into the first chamber. I mean, it couldn't be too big. The opening to the second chamber to the first was maybe ten feet tall by maybe six or seven feet wide. But we could hear something big moving. And when you look into the mouth of the cave, it only allows you so much light so you can't see all the way to the entrance to the second chamber. We decided it was probably best not to stick around and find out. So we got out of there quickly and walked about maybe five, six hundred yards into the thickness of the forest where we could hear the sounds, those same exact dragon squawking sounds, I guess you'll call them, outside, probably back the way we came, back by the entrance or the mouth of this cave. It's definitely had a lasting impression on my friend and I Anytime we're in the woods, I'm not saying at all that dragons exist or anything like that, but it did sound like some sort of pissed off large reptile. I don't know. I'm just glad that we didn't stick around to see what it was. I can only imagine. Call me crazy, but I could have sworn, a month ago, me and my girlfriend, while walking on a dike, saw this strange reptile-like creature hunched over, crawling out of the storm drain, right near our house. My girlfriend and I like to take hikes on the dike often, since it runs several miles all up and down the river, and to our left is a large storm drain opening. The only people that ever go down there is other teenagers, people who do drugs and maybe graffiti. There's really no point in going in there. It's just that, a large empty storm drain tunnel that leads out to the small river. As we were walking by, somewhere I think around April 4th or 5th, we're just walking and having conversation. She looks over and is like, hey, look, check that out, Brayden. I turn and see this thing that's all white, but kind of like a pale green, crawling on all fours out of the storm drain like it's struggling to move. Then it just kind of plops down and quickly scurries off into the brush. My girlfriend and I were both like, what did we just see? I'll try and describe it to you as best as I can, because it was daylight. Even though a little bit of overcast, we still got a pretty good look at it, and even saw its face. Its skin, though, was hands down the weirdest looking. It kind of reminded me of a large blanket draped over its skin that hugged tightly, like its skin was all interconnected. There wasn't a distinct arm and leg. It was all like webbed together, if that makes any sense. And it had these dull kind of white spines protruding out of its back. I don't even know if they were poking out of its skin, but they were bony and lumpy. The head was just like a person's, but it had these little nubby bumps all over its skull. It was more green on the head, and it had scales from what it appeared. The face was flat, the eyes being very big, sunken in, and what appeared to be yellow. I couldn't see a mouth, but I can tell you it did not have a snout, so I didn't see any lips, or a nose really. Not at the distance we were. It even had a tail too, that was very similar to like an alligator's tail, except not as spiny. The whole experience, I mean, whatever we were looking at, 
was freaky looking. It kind of reminded me of something you'd see off Star Trek, like some reptilian alien race or something. I don't know. My girlfriend isn't really into sci-fi movies like I am, so to her, it just freaked her right out. She always refers to it now as a failed science experiment, or some sort of a creature that broke loose from a lab and escaped in the storm drain. Oh, and the size of this thing. It was easily the size of an adult, which is one of the reasons why we were so freaked out. And it moved so awkwardly, like it wasn't comfortable moving in the position and the body that it was placed in. It was not fluid and smooth at all, like it had stiff joints or something. I don't know. Even just thinking back to it creeps me out. What surprises me, too, is we were maybe only 40 feet away from it, and we had a clear view of it. Had it looked up, it would have looked up directly at us, even though we got a pretty good look at its face, its body, everything, and it just quickly wanted to scurry off and hide, as if it knew it was vulnerable and exposed. Me and my girlfriend have since walked that dike and have not seen it again since. And now, sometimes, we'll kind of dare each other to go down to the storm drain to see if there are more of them, or that thing is back there. Anyway, talk about a strange experience. I honestly... My brother and I have a story that happened during the day, and we're both positive what we saw was a skinwalker. Here's what happened. We were staying in Wenatchee in Washington State. It's kind of eastern, but not really. Like, it wants to be eastern, but it's not. Anyhow, we were staying with my friend's family whilst my parents were out of state. My friend's mom, I'll call her Tammy, says to me, We would get your brother. Dinner's ready. To which I replied, Where is he? My friend, I'll call her Emily, goes, I think he's by the river. So I said, Okay, and went to go get him. I crossed the backyard, which is really a field, and prepared myself to go down a stupidly steep hill. The only way to get down the hill was to keep your foot planted on some rocks. It's either that or you fly down. I got down the hill and say my brother just chillin' on a swing thing. You know, the swings with two or three seats on them? Those things. I stood behind for a minute, planning to push the swing a little and scare him. But I heard my name being called. So, naturally, I turned around, thinking it was Emily calling me or something. No one on the field. I had and still have a pretty active imagination, so I just brushed it off. I turned back to the swing, and my brother was standing up now. His eyes were fixed across the river, so I looked over too. We saw a deer-looking thing standing on its back legs. And I, again, was just like, oh, it's my imagination again. I looked away for a few seconds, then turned back. My brother was now shaking. He still hadn't even noticed me. The deer guy was still there, but its mouth was moving. It was saying my name. I just could barely make it out, but it was saying my name. It started to shake as well. My brother turned around, ready to run back to the house, and yelled when he saw me. This was the following conversation between us. What happened? Did you see it too? The deer? It wasn't a deer. I don't know what that thing was, but it was not a deer. Was it calling my name to you? No, it was calling my name. We can talk about it later, but I was sent to go get you five minutes ago. Dinner's ready. And I know I said I have a very active imagination, but the part that scares me is that my brother does not, and he saw exactly what I saw. And so we went inside and ate dinner, and said nothing of it. We had both relaxed for the most part by this time we got back to the house, and we texted each other about it after, so nobody would know but us. About a year after the happening, my brother came into my room and said, Hey, remember that deer thing we saw in Wenatchee a few years ago? I told him I thought about it frequently, and what he said actually scared me so bad, I thought I was going to go into cardiac arrest. He goes, Well, 
I've done some major research, and we could have died if we went near it. Turns out it was a skinwalker, and he continued to tell me about skinwalkers and what they do. I'm not getting into it, but every now and again, we both share a look when someone starts talking about stuff like wendigos and skinwalkers, urban legends and creepypasta, stuff like that, and neither of us had said anything about it. But my brother decided to tell my dad, who grew up with urban legends and stuff like that, and he also thinks it's a skinwalker. I can still see that evil thing's face every time I hear about Wendigo and Skinwalker encounters. My brother got a kind of mental effect from this thing. Defect, effect, I don't even know what to call it. I don't want to say it's like PTSD, but certain things around the topic will trigger him. He'll constantly have nightmares about it, and he doesn't like talking about it, unless he initiates the conversation. I'm a little more thick-skinned around the topic of scary things, but... It scared me into thinking I was going to die on the spot. We haven't been back to Anachi. I just seen a question on here asking about a positive encounter, and I have one I would like to share. Though it may not be what I thought. About 20 years ago, after I graduated high school, I used to run traps to make extra money in the wintertime. Since I was pregnant with my daughter, any sort of extra income was necessary, since trapping is frowned upon oddly. Anyway, my father had always told me about the creek I trapped in as being quite strange. We would always walk the creek to collect arrowheads and look for other Shawnee relics. So, he would tell me stories about the Shawnee Native American tribe and their history and folklore. It was a very special spot to us, so when I began trapping, my father would tell me to have respect for the wildlife. Don't litter, kill humanely, and don't kill what doesn't need to be killed. So, I built a great deal of appreciation to life, which led to my career in conservation. The only reason I state these things is to build context as to why I did what I did. About once a week, while walking up the creek, I would hear whistling, like a human but in random patterns and that would be along with the smell of sulfuric and rotten eggs, which my dad told me was most likely a Bigfoot or a skunk ape, and sightings had occurred as long as he could remember in our area. Then, one time I was scanning down the tree line with my binoculars to check to see if I had any coyotes and foxes in my traps to save me the walking time. I seen a fairly medium-sized tree swing dramatically a little past the tree line, so, I headed over there with my 22, hoping to sneak up on a bobcat or any animal that was medium sized my 22 could kill with a headshot. About three fourths of the way to the tree line, the swaying had stopped, and I didn't see anything, but at least two of whatever it was began whistling and whooping further back in the forest. I continued to head up the creek, and it always stayed somewhat behind me at a distance, but never left. That was pretty interesting. Then, one day, sadly an oil fracking company purchased most of the land. They still gave me permission to trap, but they had a few accidents where the water got so damn nasty, it killed just about everything. It broke my heart to see beavers, muskrats, and some coons floating down the creek every time I went. But after they had installed their rigs and cleared some forest things, got a little hostile one day, running traps almost all my traps had been ruined, bent, beaten, and broken. And the remained animals I had caught were either stolen, ripped from the trap with their foot or legs still attached, and I even found a coyote that had been messed up bad. Fur torn, broken lower jaw, head beaten in. I felt like this was in retaliation to what the oil company had done, and I was being blamed but it is positive. For a few months afterwards, I would go to the store twice a week and buy a variety of apples, pears, and a mixture of meat from carcasses I had skinned, put it in a basket, and leave it in the forest, hoping whatever it was would get it before anything else. Sometimes the basket would disappear, 
but always in two days, everything was gone. One day, I believe it left me a present in return. Next to where I dropped off the basket, there was about 100 plus small sticks stacked very neatly, about 20 acorns and a deer antler. It made me feel happy. I do hope that I did help this creature out in its very sad moments of life, though it may have been everything but a Bigfoot or skunk ape, because I never physically seen it or any tracks in the creek bed. But all of my occurrences happened in the woods along the creek, so I really don't know. So still to this day, 20 years later, I think of it time to time, and I don't see a reason why people should be afraid of them. It was a sad but positive two winter seasons with it, even if it was an animal I didn't recognize. I hope I helped. This happened when I was really young. I was around six to nine years old. A little backstory. I had a significant trauma happen to me when I was six. I don't want to go into details, but it made life difficult for a while. I totally shut down for a bit, and sleep at the time was my only safe haven. For the next couple of years after my incident, my dreams got stranger and stranger. I at first only saw them in the background of my dreams, like part of the scenery almost. Then I began to lucid dream. All of a sudden, these dark shadow people with red eyes began to manifest in my room. I never felt danger from them, and that gave me a sense of relief. I would talk to them like they were someone I knew, and I would tell them about my day. A lot of times, these conversations would end because they would hear something and move off my bed. I would wake from my semi-asleep state by trying to go after them. Towards the end of my encounters with these creatures, I got a sense of terror, and I could never pinpoint it until one night, a white figure came through my door and reached out with a knife toward me. I woke up with a jolt and never saw any of them again, though I will sometimes see one of them dart out of my vision. Some context. This happened like 10 years ago, on a hill southwest from Columbia. I'm skeptical about a lot of things, but this, I'm absolutely sure what I saw there was real. I was camping with my Boy Scout troop in a not so friendly place. Very, very hot. Really rough terrain. Awfully humid. Our troop was more likely military service than scout life. It was kind of far away from the main road, and the main base was in a tree-covered hill. I think that could be worth noted that it is less than five kilometers from an indigenous sacred site known as the Sacred Territory of the Creator, and probably it is a sacred site to, I don't know since the tribes that inhabited the area were forced by the Spanish to abandon their belief, traditions, and language, so there's a lot of things we don't know about them even I being a descendant of them. It was 3 p.m., and we sent three people to do the dishes after lunch. There was a small lagoon five to ten minutes downhill. It shouldn't take more than a half an hour for them to be back. An hour passes. They haven't came back. Knowing them, surely they're just having a trivial and boring gossip conversation, but as a patrol leader, I have to call them back. They didn't respond to whistles, so... I personally went downhill to find them. The way to the lagoon is mostly a two and a half foot path between a steep hill and a dry river with dense vegetation and closed curves. I was walking carelessly until I noticed something behind a curve. At first, I thought it was a really massive vulture, but I felt uneasy, so I started going back in silence until I steeped over a dry branch. After the crackling, the thing extended its wings, showing a very muscular humanoid back, and then a head that watched me. Then, it took off with a sound more like a helicopter than a bird. Nonsense, I thought. There must be a rational explanation. Maybe it was just my imagination. I arrived to the lagoon and effectively, they were having the most boring and dumb of conversations. I told them to pack everything and started going back to the campsite. When all of the troop came out of the tree-covered area, 
the lagoon is in a clear, and told me that I was taking too long. My encounter with the birdman shouldn't have taken me more than five seconds, or so I thought. Anyway, there was a very cocky boy in the troop that said, I'll go front, and entered alone in the woods. Five seconds later, I heard the same helicopter-like sound, and the boy came running from the woods, hyperventilating. Scouter, I saw a man with wings. Of course, everybody laughed, but I didn't say a word. Hi, I've got kind of a strange thing that's bugged me for going on probably 10 years now. So, growing up, I always felt like my parents' house was haunted. I always experienced weird things, seen shadows, and just felt uneasy. I also experienced sleep paralysis very frequently. I didn't know what it was back then, and I thought I was being specifically targeted. At night, it was like a black cloud hovering around the ceiling of the bedrooms, and I kind of remember seeing eyes. I also always got a very uncomfortable feeling going down into the basement and coming back up. Like the black cloud from the nighttime was chasing me up the stairs or something. Anyway, these were quote unquote normal experiences for me growing up, as they were so frequent. However, there was this one time that really freaked me out, and I cannot for the life of me find any kind of information on it. So, what happened was, I was about 16 years old, old enough to drive anyways. My parents were out in town for the night, and I'd met them for a bit on my way home from work, and then proceeded to go home myself. It was winter time, and to save heat, we had blocked off the second story of our house. I had to get something that was in my upstairs bedroom, so I opened the partition we had blocking off the stairs. When I opened the partition, there was this thing sitting on the stairs. The best way I can describe it was kind of like a gargoyle. It was hunched over and just sitting there on the stairs, eye level. It was big, adult sized, but scrawny, dark, had wings. I can't recall if it made a noise. I freaked out and ran and locked myself in another room while I called my parents. I was in full panic mode. I had never seen it before or since. It still bugs me to this day. I remember it so vividly. And being that it was about 10 years ago, my younger sister has since described something similar. I had never told her the story before. I have searched and searched and the only things I can find are things about the Mothman or about gargoyles outside. Anyway, I thought I'd share because it still bugs me. I'm wondering if anyone else has experienced something similar. My parents don't believe in me or are just in denial of whatever is going on there, but I know what I saw. Well. After my nymph's fairy story, a lot of people have asked me to give more, so there's a lot of you who won't believe me, but my village is a freaking supernatural place with weird things happening over the years, and there was even a UFO crash. You can all search it on Google. My village is Atalanti, A-T-A-L-A-N-T-I, named after the Greek Amazon, and it was all over the news back in 1990 when the weird object landed. But let's get started. My first story. While my great grandfather, from my grandfather's side, was young, he was working for someone who had sheep, and one night, one of the sheeps went nuts. So during the night while they were asleep, they heard some noises and they woke up to find the sheep having a saddle on and walking. They tried to stop it, but it was like it didn't listen. None of the sheeps ever did this before, so, when the sheep turned around, it didn't really look like a sheep anymore, but something else. Like the voice was deeper, and it was like it had walked on two legs. The face was like distorted, and it was definitely not white anymore. My great-grandfather was so scared after he run, and never worked with this guy again. Story number two. There are a lot of rumors about people using dark magic and evil things and a guy my grandfather knew didn't believe these things were real. 
He kept walking around telling this to the locals at the cafes, and a weird old dude had heard him, and he was like, you'll see tonight. So, he sent a weird freaking donkey to him that kept kicking him at night until he begged to stop and said he believed in demonic entities. Story number three. Now, this is a neighbor of my grandfather while they were in their 20s. He was a man who went to church very often, always praying, always believing in God, and it was like the devil tricked him every day. There was a boy who kept calling him at nights at the stairwell of his house. He asked him to go outside and play, and after a while, when he didn't join him, the boy turned into a black dog. That happened for a long time until they called a priest and it stopped. Story number four. This happened to one of my uncles. He came back from work late at night. They were working as farmers with clover. Anyway, there used to be a small and narrow street that led to the house faster, but no one went there during late night. It was a crossroad, and there was a small faucet there too, but everyone avoided it after midnight. Well, my uncle decided to heed faster home rather than to stay safe and something invisible attacked him. It grabbed him by the neck and pushed him down. He immediately started saying a prayer, the Lord's Prayer, and the thing left. Possibly a demon, a priest had later told him to never use that street. And guess what? The street doesn't exist anymore. There's a deserted house there now, and I don't want to know what's hiding in there. Story number five. My aunt used to hear every night a weird banging outside of their window when they moved in their new home, like someone was chopping wood. They often went out to see if there was someone, but no one was there, and apparently they learned that they have killed soldiers at the place during World War II. Crazy. Story number three, the alien UFO crash. So during 1990 in the summer, there were a lot of UFO sightings all around Greece and one actually crashed at a hill next to my village. Story number seven. My cousin said at their clover field once that something had landed again because there was a circle and it was like burned and for literally about two years, nothing grew on that place again. Story number eight. When we went with my grandfather to buy cheese from a guy he knows, we walked into his farm. I looked around the walls and it was full of lashes like the whips that hit the horses with, but some of them were a bit too much. They seemed super heavy, and I asked my grandfather what's that. I was like 9 to 10, but I have never seen that type of lash before. It didn't look normal. Anyway, my grandfather told me to shush, and he said we'll talk home. So, when we went home, he told me that man calls demons and hits them. He asked them who they hurt and then hits them so hard with those whips. So, I was like, oh, he's nice then. And my grandfather said immediately, he hasn't been in church for many, many years, because what he's doing is against God. Even though he hits them, he still uses dark magic to call them in. Well, guys, these are just my stories, and I have a lot more, about ghosts and saints appearing at churches, and so many kids I know have their own stories from their grandparents. I swear, my village, and especially central Greece, there's something there. Some people even claim to have seen satyrs at the ancient place of Delphi, that they're weird electromagnetic powers, and don't get me started about Mount Olympus. Anyway, hope you enjoy these. Hi everyone, I would like to share this story. I've heard about two men who supposedly lived in the Develis Cave in Penteli, Athens, Greece. Some people from the area have said they've encountered them close to the forest and the cave. Well, I need to tell you that there's a lot of theories about this cave, about other dimensions, and the fact that you can actually travel somewhere else through here. Even UFO sightings, people losing their memory, there's the phenomenon of negative gravity, which is amazing. There's so much electromagnetic activity. So people who claim seeing them said the men always walk with their hands behind their back and whoever saw them thought they didn't have hands. But if you took a look from the back, you could see their hands were bird-like, 
like claws. They never spoke, almost like they couldn't, and they were very tall and pale. Now, could this really be just a spooky story? But if it's not, what do you think they could be? Could they really be from a different dimension? Or their entities? Or just people who were born like this? There's also sightings of angels and ghosts on the area, so maybe it's all illusions from the huge electromagnetic energy field. Also, another fact about the cave is that the compasses go crazy there, and during 1977, they said the army actually did some experiments there, and after the 1990s Satanist actually went there for, you know, their satanic rituals. I was on the Little Miami bike trail heading back to Murrow from Oregonia, mile marker 23.5. It was Sunday, April 12th, around 5 in the afternoon. Since the COVID restrictions were enacted a week or two prior, the trail had become so crowded every day of the week. However, a cold front came in, and it was cool, cloudy day, and very few people on the trail. Maybe 15 to 20 riders encountered from Oregonia to Kings Mill. Well, maybe more, but not bad. I'm retired and ride this route nearly daily, weather permitting. So, after passing under the former Jeremiah Morrow Bridge, I-71, over Little Miami River, there's a long, gentle arc in the trail. I haven't seen a soul since I turned around at Wilmington Road. I'm cruising. It's nice and quiet. When suddenly... I heard a loud knock, so distinct that I instantly said in my head, that was a knock. It came from atop the hill to the east. I pondered all of the conditions, kids playing, not, cold, remote, and they don't play in woods anymore, adults messing around, maybe? But how would they know I was there? Natural, very doubtful. I'm nearly 68 and never heard anything so crisp, clearly like a Louisville slugger, full speed against a barkless, solid ash tree, or so I imagined. There, that's what happened. I look online to see if any Bigfoot sightings had been reported in this area, and found none. I stored the incident away until last weekend when I was talking to my son. He's 46 in May, and I raised him near Murrow, abuting the former fresh farms in the 3C Highway. Our school district includes the Mainville area, and one of his good friends lived on a hillside at a 90-degree curve on Sickby Road. His friend, Chris Flick's older brother, told Nick, 20 years ago, he and his dad both saw a Bigfoot walking through the woods on the opposing hillside two different times. Nick said he never related this until he told me, because of my knock story, of course. He said he'll never forget it. And because of his story, I tell you my story. I was driving down Willard Road around 5 p.m. as I came around the last right-hand corner, looking toward the straightaway to the junction with Cook Underwood Road. I saw a black object in the road. I thought it was a bear, and the largest bear I have ever seen. It took up the whole left lane of the road, and it was huge. It looked like the butt was raised up. I figured it could be a 600 pound bear in my mind. Then I saw this commotion going on, like something moving up and down, all black. A bear will run or lumber across the road. At the time, I thought I have never seen a bear do this. I thought this could be several deer or elk walking in the road. I was confused about all the motion going on. Then as it approached, the creature and the creature approached the edge of the bank. It popped up. I yelled out, It's a man! What is a man doing out here in the woods this time of night? It stepped onto the bank and walked into the woods. As my mind was trying to figure out what I saw, I saw the whole body and the head. The right leg stepped onto the bank, left arm back, no hat, no coat, no clothes. There was no snout or ears like a bear. Yes, a cone-like head, tall, arms longer, legs bulky. My headlights lit it up. By the time I passed it, 
It had disappeared into the woods, and by the time I reached Cook Underwood Road, about 600 feet, I knew what I saw, but was still just trying to process it. I went back on Sunday to see if I could see prints, but it had rained hard all night and I saw no prints. I still see the creature in my mind. Later, as my mind was processing what I saw, I knew it had to be arms and legs going up and down as it crossed the road, and also it was actually crawling, then stood up by the bank, but it was so fast like it popped up. Still hard for me to believe what I saw, but I believe it was a Sasquatch. I also now believe as I approached it when my headlights came upon it, it turned back towards the headlights and scrunched its face because the headlights were in its eyes, then turned and faced into the woods and walked off. Hello, my name, well, my name isn't important, but for the sake of the story, I'll call myself Tiffany. I'm a 15 year old from Dublin, Ireland. I know you are based halfway across the world, but thanks to the internet, I can reach out to you and tell you about an experience I recently had that spooked me beyond belief. Let me start by saying that I'm not your typical girly girl. I run, I hike, and I even play soccer occasionally with my brothers. I don't scare easily, is what I'm trying to say, so I know when I get scared. It's bad. And this was bad. Really horrendously bad. I was having a sleepover with two of my closest friends. We did what most teens do when we have a sleepover. We chatted about boys, painted each other's nails, messing around with TikTok, and even looked out my window and used our phones for bird watching. At least that's what me and my friends do. It was such a fun evening, and I spent most of it in belly fits of laughter. I remember thinking how lucky I was to have such good friends in my life, and that these were the best days of our lives. My two friends then eventually got bored so we racked our brains on things we could do. Because we were home alone, we decided to play hide and seek, for old time's sake. It had been years since we played it, and we thought it would be fun. Being 15, you're kind of in that awkward stage between partially a kid and partially an adult. It's hard for me to even type these events, as I can feel icy fear welling up within my body. Little did I know that this game would become the darkest, most frightening experience of my life. The other two girls decided to hide first, and I would count to 30, to allow them to find somewhere really secretive. I could hear them giggling away, just like we were 8 years old again, and I knew for sure somebody went up to the attic as I heard footsteps on the stairs. I hadn't been up there in years as it's super dusty and I always end up sneezing, but I guess this meant I would have to go up now. I finally finished and left my bedroom, peering around the corridor to an empty hallway. I figured this would not be like hide and seek from our childhood days, but they would surely find somewhere truly elusive that would be hard for me to even access. I decided to check the attic first, as I was confident one of the girls had went up there. I figured it was Chloe, as the footsteps were quite loud, and Chloe is a sturdy girl, as opposed to Jojo, who is a wafer. I thread cautiously up the steps, trying to hold my breath in to avoid inhaling the musty odor. I could hear some whispers, as if both girls had gone up and hid. Guys, I know you are up here. It's so gross, I said, trying to stop laughing. I just had an image of them hunched in the corner, amidst cobwebs and an old tattered furniture. I opened the attic door, and all of a sudden, I didn't hear a sound. It was eerily quiet, 
and the light switch was off. When I turned it on, it only illuminated a portion of the room as it was so old. It was an old bulb, emitting only a few shards of yellowy, faded light. I noticed an old dresser in the corner, and I could have swore I saw something yellow behind the cracks in the cupboard. I knew that Jojo was wearing a yellow jumper, so I immediately knew it was her. I stood back though for a few seconds and admired that she was brave enough to come up to the attic and find the cupboard in the dark room and manage to not hurt herself. It almost seemed impossible as I stood there imagining it. I also thought I would have heard her breathing or laughing, but the room was deathly quiet. As I reached out to open the handle, I had the oddest feeling I should turn, as if something was preventing me from opening it. I knocked away the crazy notion and flung the door open. At that moment, at least ten bats flew out of the old dresser, out of the attic, and right into the hallway. I screamed at the top of my voice, falling to the ground and knocking my head against an old pram. That must have been mine when I was a child. I thought the other girls would have ran up to me, but I laid there for around 30 seconds, moaning as I had hurt my head and ankle. Before me, however, was a vision that made my blood run cold. My mouth must have opened to fit a football through it, and my eyes felt like they had been pried open. They were wide in horror and shock. A large spider, the size of a coffee table, stood before me. But the thing about this spider is it had the face of a man. I tried to scream, but my mouth was dry with dust and fear. This creature was black with ten legs, what appeared to be antler-like appendages, and huge antennae raising out of its head. It also seemed to have large black wings that had tiny red spots all over them. I couldn't believe what was happening. Had I been knocked unconscious? Was I suffering from an hallucination? I continued staring at the creature, hoping it would not kill me, but expecting it to any second. How would my family find me? Bloodily mutilated in the attic? With no sign of anything? Or would the creature eat me? and I would disappear without a trace. But still, the creature continued to stare, not indicating an overt aggression and behavior, but its posture spoke power and dominance over my now horizontal and injured body. I heard my friends running and shouting my name, and they got worried. I could hear their footsteps climbing the attic door, and I turned to see them. At least if the creature killed me, I would see the faces of my friends as my last vision and not the beast before me. When they arrived, I turned back, expecting the creature to pounce on all of us, but it was gone. There were no signs of it at all. I screamed in terror, telling them to run and to carry me. I knew the creature had to be somewhere, but one of the girls went back to check and found nothing. So too, my parents checked when they got back, and of course found nothing. I began to think I was crazy, that I had made it all up. Maybe I had some sort of paranormal experience, I don't know. But after reading stories on the internet, I now believe that I encountered some sort of large insectoid creature. It was hands down the most disturbing and unsettling experience of my life. The after effects have been equally horrendous, as I have had to drop out of school. My hair has fallen out due to stress, and sometimes I can barely eat. I am due to see a counselor next week who specializes in post-traumatic stress disorder, but I'm pretty sure they're going to think I have schizophrenia, especially once I tell them my encounter. You know, the whole ordeal just makes me want to scream. That's why I'm getting in touch, to see if you can help me and connect the dots with other people who have had any sort of similar experiences, whether it be in the woods or their own houses. Perhaps you can help me get through this. I strongly believe that the whole experience I had, whatever this thing was, was entirely paranormal. 
Hi. I had an experience when I was only 17 years old that I have never spoken about till now. I filed a police report about it at the time, but it was never dealt with, as the town I am from was so small, the cops didn't really do a thing. I believe I had some sort of sighting of something that I can't be too sure or explain. It was Halloween of 1995, and me and some of my friends went to shoot a documentary in our local woods. Listen, I know it sounds very Blair Witch, but it was actually a documentary about the role of trees for dispersing oxygen in the environment. I am an environmental scientist, and so I've always loved nature. But I guess what I saw on that trip showed me a different side of nature, a monstrous side to it, that perhaps it can spawn things so deadly and abhorrent to us humans that it makes us want to die. Because that's how I felt when I had this sighting. And any time I think of it, I also feel a sense of dread and fear. I woke up at 3 a.m. one night. I was sharing a tent with one other girl. I got up to pee a little away from our camp, and I could see still the burnt embers where we had our toasted marshmallows just a few hours prior. I remember being a little appalled at how much litter we had created, but that was my conservationist instincts kicking in, even back then. After I had finished urinating, I stumbled back into camp. As I stood there, just on the margins of the camp, I could feel somebody's eyes on my back. It was the strangest thing. It was as if I could actually feel two laser beams burning my back. I turned around, feeling a little spooked, and squinted to see what looked like a large spider creature in the distance. I squinted again, and the figure seemed to take the shape of a man with large black wings. There was a purring sound from the creature, and its wings flapped open, wider and wider, revealing a myriad of dark colors amidst the black. I remember feeling awestruck and terrified. I was clearly encountering something supernatural. But then, my science instinct kicked in, and I thought maybe this was some kid from our school who we had heard were going camping and wanted to goof around with us. The creature, or whatever this was, alien being, demon, call it whatever you will, it continued to watch me, and I attempted to outstretch my hand to see what would happen. I know that sounds crazy, but I was immensely curious to get a closer look. At this gesture, the creature flew away, in a vertical line into the sky, leaving a trail of cobwebs and a purple-like aura after it. It was almost otherworldly. It was the weirdest thing, and I began to think I was having an hallucination, but I knew I wasn't. It was all too real. I could feel it in every pore of my body. When my friends woke me up the next morning, I told them about it, but they thought I was just messing around. I guess 25 years later, I wonder if I encountered some unknown species, half man, half insect, perhaps some nocturnal antisocial creature that was disturbed by me and my campers. Whatever it was, I haven't come across anything similar in all my nature excursions over the years. I hope you can help me find out what this creature could have possibly been. I've heard stories of the Mothman but I don't exactly know if what I saw would count as that. Anyway, based on what I encountered, I felt the urge to write in. 2020 is the year after all of self-healing and discovery, and I know I have buried this memory for far too long over the last 25 years. The Mothman is one of those things that happens to just divide people into two different camps. 
those that think it's dumb, and those that think it's an intelligent and sentient being, and has its own motives. I lean towards the second. I only saw the Mothman once, ever, and the encounter not only came to define my life ever after, but it remains my earliest and most vivid childhood memory. I was seven years old, and my parents had a home in the suburbs of Chicago. I know what you're thinking when you hear Chicago, skyscrapers and carbon dioxide, but where we lived, it was as country as a turnip green, and pretty quiet. Monsters were the last thing on my mind, at least not other than the ones that we heard about in the news that came from the cities. I was out having fun in a cluster of trees one day. I could tell that the sun would set soon, and I was beginning to head home, when I became aware of a sort of strange buzzing sound. I couldn't tell you if it was something that I heard, or if it was something that I actually felt. I just remember the sensation in my ears and on my skin at the same time like a bad setting on a massage bed. The sensation was distracting, and I missed the shape that leapt overhead from the branches of one tree to another. Just as I was starting to get enough sense in me to persist in moving towards home, the shape came down from the trees and landed directly in my path. The new proximity of the presence made the buzzing so intense, it was just a few steps away from being agony. The figure that stood before me was a little more than a shadow in the evening light, and yet it seemed like it would appear to be a shadow even at high noon, as light seemed to be absorbed and refracted by the being, rather than reflected by it. It was horrifying. The only part of it that didn't swallow light was its horrible eyes, which were two bulging spheres of unnerving red light. Their glow guttered slightly with a cold fire of bioluminescence. As soon as I was looking into those eyes, I couldn't look away. The buzzing began dialing into my thoughts with a language that I didn't speak and that I couldn't understand. Whatever this thing was, I didn't know it was Mothman at the time. It was trying to speak to me telepathically in some sort of demonic language. I could only observe how my mind was reacting to it. I couldn't tell if it was psychic or something more. Three times the buzzing sensation ramped up to an unbearable intensity, like I was being punched or whipped or slapped from the inside out. On the third stroke, my vision went blurry and I passed out. I woke up in my bed and the memories were distant enough to make me question if I had dreamed the whole thing. When my parents entered my bedroom to check on me, the looks on their faces told me that I had dreamed none of it. Like any seven-year-old would, I told my story of the horrific monster that I witnessed, as if I were relating something perfectly matter-of-fact, and I described the things that it did to me, as best as afforded by my limited seven-year-old vocabulary. Nobody believed me. I mean, how could they? Asking anyone to believe in a nine-foot entity resembling a demonic moth that went around giving children migraines was a high price. Asking for an additional leap of faith in that notion, that said demonic moth was now outside of its native home. It wasn't until later in life that I could tell that my encounter with the Mothman wasn't just a benign crossing of paths. Rather, it had seeded something inside of me. I became intimately acquainted with anxiety and dread. Right before something awful would happen in my world, I would feel that buzzing sensation. Sometimes it would be subtle, as a tingling in my fingertips. Other times it was unbearable, as if one of my limbs had been asleep for hours, or it would be deafening, keeping me from sleep. But without fail, whenever the sensation came, trouble accompanied it. I'm in my thirties now, and over the years, I've done my research on this thing. It itself has built a reputation as being a harbinger of doom like a bad omen appearing before disaster. Much the same way of its appearance back in the 1960s and the great collapse of the bridge. Don't think it's a curse that I could hammer out into a blessing. My experience with the Mothman might be a little different than anything else you've read, but it still holds a common thread with the other accounts for one simple fact. 
Nothing, literally nothing, has ever occurred in connection with the Mothman that has ever been good. My experience with the Mothman isn't all that big, and yet somehow it is. I'll tell you, and you decide what to think. I'm from Point Pleasant, West Virginia. The supposed nest of the beast, I guess. I was in college at the time. Me and my buddies had made it in altogether, so it was only a matter of time before we got in trouble. My friend Jack had met a girl that he really liked, and all of her friends were boy hungry and were eager to pair off with the rest of us. Looking back, it's questionable if they even really liked us. But when you're a college brat, you don't always need a reason to do things, especially things that involve the opposite sex. All we knew was that we were together and each of us had a girl that we thought we could call our own. And we had access to some pretty decent alcohol and no adult supervision. Add that to the ingredient of there being woods nearby in any direction and you went viola, the perfect recipe for a good time. Or so I thought. The girl I had paired off with for the reason of college was your stereotypical flozy blonde. And for the sake of the story, we'll call her Cheryl. We sat around the campfire. Before long, we kind of weren't talking to each other anymore, but pawing at our dates. Me and her got the notion to go play hide and seek in the deep dark woods. So, we stumbled over the bodies of some of our lightweights in our group and went off into the pines. I couldn't see her, but I could hear her. She was giggling uncontrollably, and at the time, it was the cutest thing in the world. I don't really know at what point I stopped hearing her giggle, but I could still hear her movement all around me. I figured my senses must have been royally blunted because she suddenly had this incredible speed. When I was closing in on her in one direction, it seemed like she would disappear and reappear behind me. And then, when I would turn around, the sound of her feet were somewhere else. I finally yelled out that it was time to stop screwing around. A voice answered me, but it wasn't Cheryl's. It automatically dialed my dread knob up to 100, despite my intoxication. Imagine hearing that sound while you're all alone in the dark, when you thought you were alone with your girlfriend, and you suddenly realize she's not there. Well, that's how I felt. The sound had made me stand still for a moment, but then my eyes had more or less adjusted to the dark. I didn't exactly have the help of a lot of moonlight, but I could pick out the shapes of the trees. And then a towering figure tiptoed from behind one tree and crossed my view to disappear behind another tree. It did it exactly the way that I expected Cheryl would have, except that this was coming from something so tall and so inhumanly grotesque in shape, with two demonic wings folded up behind it with long behemoth arms held out at its sides and two red eyes staring directly at me, into me. This was a living demon. It stopped to observe me like a frightened insect up from the trees. I took off running as fast as I could back to the safety of the fire. The good news is, is that I found Cheryl next to the campfire. She had lost me about the same time I had lost her, so she just found her way back and passed out. Well, fast forward in time, and things got a lot worse. She passed away not long after this sighting, with what I would learn to be was the Mothman. She was found in her dorm unconscious. She hadn't shown up for class in several days, and her friends went to check up on her. She was rushed to the hospital, only to be pronounced dead. She had overdosed on heroin. I don't know if that's one of the disasters that Mothman's appearance supposedly predicts, but did occur after my own personal encounters with this monster. I'll never know, and it's all the same if I never find out.